I, it, we can't live in a world like that. We can't live in a dictatorship where that is, it's either this or that. And this is what Spurs fans do, right? We beat Chelsea and West Ham. Fans are in the stadium making videos with like 20,000 people Sabah, letting no, off wait, flares. Sabah, no one right? said hang it's on. either or. It can be hang both. On, hang on, hang on. Let me finish. I, I, we, we're spoken, let me land on my point. you got to let me land on my point. you got to let me land on my point. Well, you're not rebuttaling my point. You're saying I, that it's either I'm getting I never that. said it's either or. Hang on. I, I, I didn't say you said it's either or, right? I said our fans do, right? The problem is this. If you've got Antonio Conte and you as a fan want to stick your chest out and give the big one that we're going to win something now because Antonio Conte's here, when that doesn't happen, when that fails, you knew the players we had, but yet you still backed the manager to get them over the line. That is now on the manager because you knew the players we had. You knew the players. Sheffield United played what? A again, 17, I, I, wait, Saba, Saba. A 17 as, as said, the players we have are good enough to beat Nottingham Forest, to beat Sheffield, to yep. beat these teams. Yep. Whether I, I still, whether I think these players are shit and they are. They're still better than those players that play for those teams for a reason. They play for Tottenham and they don't play for Sheffield United sure. in the Championship exactly. for a reason. They're shit. When they go out and these players prove to us that they're worse than we thought they was and that these players are not maintaining the high level. Eric Dyer last season, Sabah, was he not one of the most improved Tottenham players? All right. No, I, th I think he was crap well, last well, season you, as well. You can say he wasn't, but then the England manager would disagree. A lot of rival fans would disagree because oh, everyone no. agreed that <laughs> Eric Dyer got himself back into the England team because he had a very good season. Oh, season. no. A manager that picks Eric Dyer well. over players like Tamori. So again, and you again, no, Sabah, that... Sabah, so, so again, so the point is that these players didn't maintain the good levels that Conte brought them up to. And then when they began to get or worse maybe, or, worse, or maybe so Conte's do... not as good as you think. Well... I'm, maybe, I'm maybe his just a crazy record. His managerial right. record would show otherwise. So here we go. go so there, we get to it. So we get to, go to out it. There and say he's Why not is that good? Would just be lies. No, 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 no. No. See again. A manager that's again. won as many Serie A titles as him, George. If you're going to paraphrase, paraphrase correctly, my friend. Don't paraphrase and change words. Right. I'm sad. I said to you, maybe he's not as good as you think. You I didn't say. Right. I said maybe he's not as good as you think. You turn around and say you you don't think he's good. I think Antonio Conte is a serial winner who is excellent when he has got the finished article. Every club he's won at, he has gone in, made two or three signings. At That's live. <laughs> That's what you know. Wait, wait. If you're going to come, come with your facts. At every club he goes into, he Didn't signs 10 or 12 players. Didn't even he finish my point. Two or three. Didn't he even finish my point. Two or three players. Didn't well, he finish my point. Two or three players. He, he's, he changes if, the whole team. If you let me finish my point... It, Sabah, but you, you, you let again, me finish my point or not? You started off saying it's two or three players. He, he but, but you didn't let me land on my point. You've got you've because got a real issue. You can't... It was going nowhere because again, you're talking you about know? him coming into a team. How do you know? How do you know where my points go in if you don't let me finish it? George, George, you do realize when he went to Chelsea, he only signed three players. Jesus Christ, Marcus Alonso and Golo Kante. and won the league, right? And he won the league, and he won the league, right? So, George, if you're gonna. How many right. signs did he make against Milan in the same in the same amount of tenure? Two years. How many signs did he make? Hang on, but wait, hang on, hang on. But we're not talking about two years. We're talking about into Milan. An yes months. or no? You've got to let, you've got to let someone finish their sentence, man. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. Let's have Landy's point for a moment, guys. Let Landy's if point. I, if I can't finish my sentence, this is pointless. In in year one at Chelsea, what did Conte do? In in his first season, what did he do? Just to answer, what did he do in his first year? Answer your question. It's your point. You don't want me to speak. Go for it. Bro. Oh, my goodness. You are bloody hard work, aren't you? In his Sabah, first year... it's your point. Make the fucking it... point and move on, man. Shit. Like, you want me to stop speaking? I'm stopping speaking. Make your point. Jesus, you are everything wrong with Tottenham fans. Right. In his first year, Antonio Conte won the league at Chelsea. Yeah? We all agree. In his first year, he won the he won the, he won the the um, league with Inter Milan. We agree. Right? Because the clubs he go to are big clubs with great players. Right, they are big clubs with very good players that he can sprinkle some stardust on, and they win. He's come to Tottenham Hotspur, where all of a sudden he's realised, oh, I don't have all the cream of the crop players. Ah, my methods don't actually work unless I've got the top players. And what did we see him do to try and be a manager? Nothing. He put out the same eleven with the same formation. His substitutions were awful. So I'm going to call it out right now. 
No, Conte is not as good as we think as a manager. He is a serial winner with top players immediately. And he's never going to get that at Spurs. So when fans are going, yeah, I put my chest out. I said Conte would win something. More the fool you. More the fool you for not knowing him and not knowing our club. Done. I, I just think with Tottenham, it's a it's an internal club issue. I don't think this group of players that was under Pochettino that had the pinnacle of Tottenham in recent years, which was a third place finish, is ever going to win a trophy. I think it's, there's Great. too many issues surrounding that group of players at this club. And it's like teams in the NBA and stuff. Sometimes you just need to blow it up and go, yes, it nearly worked. It didn't work. It nearly worked. Blow it up. Harry Kane's got to go. Son's got to go. You have to hit the reset button completely. Agreed. You have to go find a new identity and you have to almost rebrand Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. And yes, I, I understand I understand that heritage and the history of Tottenham of oh, we like to be we like to be playing on nice football and this, that, and the other. You whatever your right new identity mm. is, it has to be a clear identical change from what you have now. Because right now you're seen as that side that are nearly there, but never quite, but you're too good to hit the reset button. You've got Harry Kane. You've got Hyungman's son. You've got um, Christian Romero, people think highly of. You've got Kulisevsky. And even in years gone by, you had the better version of Lloris and this, that, and the other. So you almost, you needed to hit the reset button, but you were too good to hit the reset button. So you just went, oh, we'll do one more year. We'll do one more year. We'll do one yep. more year. Maybe this is the one. And Maybe then it never came. I think so the biggest you have, now you have to you. to you have to cut it off now. 100%. You have to cut it off and go, we do it. We reset. I, you know, we go again. I think that's part of it as well. I want to something that we said earlier though, about top four and not winning. Now Spurs for me are almost the embodiment of this, but it's actually crept into football. This notion of getting top four is better than w winning a trophy. This notion that I've I've heard people say in the last few weeks, winning the Europa League is more embarrassing than not being in it, which again is a strange notion to have. You win a Carabao Cup, it's called a Mickey Mouse Cup. You had Potch at the helm that was talking about we don't want the little trophies, we only want the big ones. That isn't just a bad mantra to have at a club that leads to failure. It's actually, football isn't dying, but it's definitely a, it's a tick. It's a parasite on football, that belief that winning trophies isn't important. You saw Jamie O'Hara, one of your chief cheerleaders online, one of your you know, pundits out there that is, you know, he's seen as a big Tottenham man, but whether people like him or not is, isn't relevant to that stage. He put a tweet out asking Spurs fans, what would they prefer? Harry Kane to be the all-time England Premier League goal scorer or, to, or for him to win a Prem. And they were all like, no, that record will last forever. That record's elite. It's better. Crap play. I saw one Spurs fan right, but loads of crap players have won a Premier League. So what does it matter? And that goes back to that straw man argument. When, so, when I say you can't compare Harry Kane to Aguero until he's won some major trophies, people say, well, Anderson and Nicky Barton, where's Brown won trophies? Are they better than Harry Kane? And it's that straw man argument. Nobody's claiming that. There is a problem at Tottenham, which is where I still think Sava and I still think George. I reckon 80% of your crowd that go to your games and lots of your fans online, if your football was pretty and if the media are talking nicely about you and you've got a star like a Kane or a Berbatov or someone that, like, that everyone rates and likes, that is enough. The expectation of having to win and then being ridiculed for not winning, I don't think Spurs fans like it. I think Spurs fans like to be on the side. They'd like to be the side ch side chick. They don't like to be the main attraction that the pressure is on. Until you're prepared to accept the pressure that comes with being a top six club that challenges, I don't think the, ch the cl team club can even do the reset that Tom's talking about or change the expectations. And I think what you said, right, Sava, in one area massively, which is if you don't rate your players and you don't rate the mentality of your club, why every summer do you give it the big to rivals that you're uh, going to do something? Every that year. I, I Every year. But, uh, Terry, Terry, you also said in a video earlier to this that it wasn't just Tottenham fans bigging up Tottenham this summer. So we wasn't rightly so. Rightly so. We wait. Rightly so. We believed into it. Like Manchester. Why United rightly so? Like, Sava, stop. I'm just talking now. Oh, it's not nice, is it? It's not nice. Just checking. You just like checking. It. You knew what it felt so how like. About, how about you? Just how checking. You, you know what it felt like, bro. bro. And I'll continue uh, now. So how about I continue? Less, you, lessons you, to be learned there, isn't there, trap your chat now. So, so Terry, <laughs> yeah, as you yeah. said earlier, he, as you said, other fans, rival fans, were hyping up Tottenham to be the, the big thing this season. 
because they believed in Antonio Conte, the big manager, bringing a trophy. If not, pushing Tottenham on to potentially challenge for a trophy. And the players at the back end of last season showed the level that they could rise it to. And that's why it wasn't just Tottenham fans that believed it. It was the whole of the Premier League thought that Tottenham was going to perform at a high, much a higher level than we did this year. So I get that. Personally, I, I didn't. I said I predicted you coming fifth and then fourth when I saw Liverpool and Chelsea not be as good as they were. So I get your point. Other people did. And they were as equally wrong. But the difference is, is that Man United fans, their job isn't to put pressure on your board and club to change its ways. Chelsea fans' job isn't to help make your club better. Fans have such an important part of football clubs. In my opinion, we're the most important part of football. We control what our clubs do. Our behaviour, how easily we give the clubs our money, how easily we turn up to games, how easily we forgive, is the difference. You look at teams like, look at Bayern Munich, what they've done. Now, they've got a different scenario, and I'll give you, I understand that. They're a one horse race to a degree. Their manager has been sacked because their fans are angry that they're in a title race. Title races, even if you're top of the league in a title race and won eight out of eight games in the Bundesliga, it's not acceptable. In the Premier League, I don't expect Tottenham to have those kind of standards, but the, the levels need to be increased. A Man United fan on YouTube or a City fan on YouTube predicting you making the top four doesn't get away from the fact that your, your internal ambition as a club is weak. We're coming fourth and going out of the Mickey Mouse trophy is seen as something to celebrate. And that isn't a dig at you, mate, because you wanted to win a trophy this year. And I give you credit for that. You should want to win. Saying you're going to win is a different thing. But wanting to win is what you all should do. It's why I always big up expressions, because as fun as he is, as informative he is, he wants his club to win and he's angry that they're not. And for me... The club is the fans. The fan. When I say like Liverpool are embarrassing themselves, I'm generally talking about the fans. When I say, it, you are your football club. You control your destiny. Fans that don't think they control how their club behaves are fools. Are fools. You, you have all the power. It's just about whether you are willing to yield that power or not. And I just don't think Spurs fans care enough about winning. And what I see, reg listen, Harry Kane doesn't need to win trophies to be a legend. Yes, he does, because every other legend, in your, all the legends in your club's history before him, won fucking trophies. Why, sh why shouldn't he? The, the levels of, the level, the, the, the lack of standards at Spurs is the big problem for me. It really is, boys. And I feel, I do feel sorry for you all. Like, I feel sorry for you. You guys pay more money than anybody else to watch football. You've got the most beautiful stadium. And there's, there's nothing at the end of that. It's, it's like having a car, but no petrol. Yeah, but Terry, we do the same thing every summer. Every summer, during this summer, I see people like, I said this in the last few weeks on here, all these Spurs fans talking about, well, we've got Conte, they've got Arteta. We've just finished above them. We've got Champions League. They've got Europa League. They're in our rear view mirror. Our fans don't learn. First of all, they never know when to keep grounded. Second of all, we've got to stop pretending that managers win trophies. If you do not have good players, you are not going to win trophies. It is that simple. But we, we, we did it when Jose came in. People went, trophies are coming. Jose's here. When Conte turns up, Conte's coming. Trophies are here. Now, this isn't about whether I like his style of football, which is some of the worst I've ever seen at White Hart Lane, by the way. But this is about he was coming in with the same players. And the players we brought in are not good enough to win a title, to challenge for a title. So where did everyone think this trophy was coming from? That's what no Spurs fan can answer me other than look at his track record at bigger successful clubs. So why did they think Spurs were going to win a trophy is the question that I'm asking. No Spurs fan can seem to answer it with a logical explanation. I think I, I add on. Oh, sorry, Terry. Just in oh, yeah, I think, gonna, go on, go on, go on. No, I was going to say, just to add on to it in regards to sort of transfer. Sorry, Terry. Um, in regards to like the players, a lot of think top fans, they go, oh, we're going to buy this player, buy this player, buy this player. But when you actually look at, Tottenham from an outside perspective as like a non-Tottenham fan, right? You're not going to be able to buy the the, the winners, the apps, the, the winners, like the, the best talent, because unfortunately, these players want to go to big clubs and win. They want to win stuff. And when you look at Tottenham, historically, that's not there. And there's going to be another club that has that, that a history that will go in for them. So what you need to do, and this is what I've been saying, like you need to focus on your youth. Those youth players need to live and breathe the club and want better, the betterment of the club. And when they, when you, when players externally can see that these players are coming through and there's a whole new batch of your golden generation coming through, they will go, okay, I can believe in this. I can believe in this for the future. That's what we had to do. We had one of the oldest squads in the league and then we had to reset. And then we brought in youth players in. But um, luckily for us, we have history of like winning and we are a big club. We haven't won for a long time. 
but there was belief that that this project could do so. Oh. Whereas I think in the transfer market, Spurs they can't you can't buy those winners. You have to create them first, and then you'll be able to buy them. I, I totally understand that. I, 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 I want to interject. Sorry, Tom. 